Hey so guys, Ryder Bucks here and welcome back to some more MotoGP and this time we're going to be on MotoGP 15, throwing it back to MotoGP 15, the 2015 season game of course where we did see in that season Valentino Rossi lose out to Lorenzo, his teammate at the time, by only 5 points to the championship, I can't believe that is what, almost 4 seasons ago now, but uh, what we're going to do, we're going to head into a race there at Sepang, where some people would argue it all went wrong for Valentino, um, it sort of ruined his own championship, but it's one of those split opinion things, was it a kick, was it not, if you don't know what I'm on about, then uh, go on YouTube at Malaysia 2015, Rossi versus Marquez, you'll see the heated battle that Rossi and Marquez got into in that race, and uh, the alleged kick, whether it was or wasn't, who knows, only they will know, but uh, anyway, we're going to do a race, 25% race, on MotoGP 15 at Malaysia, as Valentino Rossi, seeing if we can take the win, starting from the back of the grid, and I might do another one of these for Valencia, so let me know down in the comments if you want to see this for Valencia as well. For now, we're here where it sort of it kind of went wrong for Rossi, where it all went wrong. Hello. We'll see what we can do in today's race. So, I've done a quick lap round uh, at time in the time attack mode just to get used to the braking zone and stuff. I've no idea what difficulty we need to be on, but you'll see a few different riders at different teams. So, of course, we've got Ian One on the Ducati, um, Crutchlow still with LCR. Vinales back at Suzuki, Petrucci at Pramac, all those sorts of things. Nicky Hayden and Eugene Laverty in the sport. But here we go. Pretty nice game this was, to be fair. This is where the game started to get pretty good, I think. As well as in where the handling model started to get pretty decent. Um, you'll see through here. It's not as sketchy as it was on MotoGP 13. And uh, I thought I'd turn this line off earlier in the... Uh, before I got into the video, so I'll just have to quickly change that. Apologies for that, get rid of that. Um, I did turn it off when I was doing time attack mode earlier, but here we go, come to turn number one, and yeah, you can see we messed that up massively. What have we done there? Right, this is what I mean the handling. It was getting better at this point in the games, not as smooth as it is now, but it was getting there. I think getting used to it a little bit would help as well. But we're already up into P14, we're on the hard difficulty, there is one more level higher, which is simulation, and uh, one thing I notice, oh my god, look, the rear, I need to check what the traction is, I have no idea what it's on, I think it's probably on low, on this, I think I used to play high, so we're just going to have to watch out for that, you can see, the rear just wants to step out on us at every opportunity, and who is leading the way, because at this point in 2015, Marquez was leading with uh, Rossi as well. Lorenzo wasn't doing too well in this race for pace, and it was Rossi on the pace, but he was getting pretty frustrated with Marquez, constantly battling, and you could see that by the way. Each lap, their battles were getting more heated and more heated, and who's that on the floor? That looked like Mr. Mar Marquez on the floor. It was Marquez on the floor, so that would have been good for Rossi at this race. You can see it's already going better when we're recreating it, well, redoing it almost, not recreating it be doing it in 2019 but uh, trying to get underneath the Aspargaro brothers one of them at Tech 3 one of them at Suzuki obviously one of them is at uh, where are they now KTM one was a Prillia can't remember exactly where they're going off the top of my head that's pretty bad but uh, you can see just struggling to put the power down there Crutch low powers out of there lovely we got another four laps to go round here making nice progress trying to break too late coming into the final corner Look at that, we're on the gravel as well. And one thing I noticed about the handling, if you brake really hard, you turn in, you'll fold over, which is what the bikes really should do. But on the modern games, you can just hold down the brake, brake as hard as you like, and uh, it just stays up. Obviously, if you haven't got ABS on, it won't. You'll just lock up, but uh, that's what it is. Bradley Smith obviously did well in this season. He finished fourth in the championship on that Tech 3. The Yamaha was good this season, well, in the 2015 season. Lorenzo won by 330 points, and then Valentino Rossi, second, three, uh, 325 points, just 5 points off of his 10th title. That is where, <laughs> and uh, people do say this is where it went wrong for Rossi, he could have just carried on, and then he wouldn't have taken the back of the grid penalty at uh, Valencia. But it's funny, that in 2018 at Valencia, when Rossi started near the back, he made an amazing start, and what he needed to do in 2015, really, a bit ironic that, isn't it? Um, but there we go, we're already up into P4. Who's that running away with it? We've got Danny Pedrosa up ahead of us. Then we've got 
Ian One. And then, oh, look at this, battling with our teammate. Just taking a screenshot for the thumbnail, but uh, Lorenzo didn't have great pace around here. You see he's trying up the inside. But the Yamaha was good this season, and who was that just come down? Second time at that corner someone's come down. I think it was Pedrosa and Lorenzo straight up our inside wasn't expecting that. This is what the battle was like with Rossi and Marquez that year. Contact and lots of cutting each other up. It's quite an aggressive battle. I wouldn't say dirty. Very aggressive. But both Ducatis, wow. See, it was like that. Pretty much like that. Lorenzo's giving it some. Wow. We struggle out of that corner there. Get a good run, though. Really good run compared to uh, Lorenzo. Much better in a straight line. There we go. Bit of slipstream helped. But the Ducati's doing really well around here. The Ducati back in this. It didn't have its super straight line speed. I mean, it was pretty good. It was quite quick in a straight line, but didn't have the massive advantage it saw in um, 2017, 2018, maybe 2016, sort of since Lorenzo went there. Didn't see massive straight line advantages like it sees nowadays, but uh, it was a more difficult bike to ride back in 2015. Um, Ian Ono was pretty good on, good on it. Whoa, look at that, the rear, and once it starts lighting up, can't get it down. Look how much time we've lost there. That is annoying. Lost two positions. We're going to struggle to catch back up to uh, the Ducatis if we can't uh, clear these guys pretty quick. Here's Crutchlow trying it around the outside, not going to work for him there. Okay, again. Just trying to get that 10th title. Valentino Rossi. People will say this is his last proper chance to be able to get it. Well, I think next season he might have a bit of a better shot. He had a good end to 2018. Um, or a decent end to 2018 on the pace. But next year, I reckon it might be different for Valentino. He might be able to pull something off, especially if Lorenzo. I think Lorenzo and Marquez are going to clash at Honda. Two very talented very quick riders pretty young aggressive and with Lorenzo's form at the end of 2018 as well with Ducati who knows who knows it could could get very heated you know what Marcus is like when he gets some competition but here we go trying to get back into third place is Lorenzo as I say aggressive Lorenzo he's picking up the slipstream is he gonna look for a move he is but he's tucked in right behind us he's gonna go to the inside we got the Doctor's Dangle going on. Two more laps to go after this one. We struggle with the rear there. Power down. It's Dovi that leads the way from Ian Oney. A massive gap now up to Ian Oney and between Dovi and Ian Oney, actually. We've got three seconds to gain. Let's see if we can do it. It's going to be a challenge, but we're getting used to the handle model again. And you see that front wheel locking up. That is dangerous. It could fold on us at any time. And that rear snapping on us could send us into a high side at any moment. We've got to manage it, especially out of these slow corners. And look at that rear going on us there. When we get on the curb and stuff, it doesn't work out nice for us at all. So 3.3 seconds. We lost three tenths of a second up to Ian One. These Ducatis are on the pace compared to our Yamaha. Pretty inaccurate for the year, I think. But look at the gap that we've got compared to the rest of the field. If we just close down these Ducatis, and the gap the Ducatis have got. But I suppose Pedrosa fell off. He was going with them. Marquez fell off. He would have done pretty well around here. If Pedrosa was doing pretty well, of course. Marquez would as well. We're getting all over the curve, which isn't going to help. And we're losing time to Ian Oney. We need to be more aggressive, less cautious, to try and close down this gap if we can, if possible. Break in at the single board. Tip it in. Go watch the rear, watch the traction. Marquez crashes again. Two crashes in one race. This is what Rossi needed back in 2015. Lorenzo is still with us. Performing pretty well on that Yamaha. We've got the gap back to three seconds now. Pretty good through that third sector. Watch the rear exit in that corner there. And we're going to be heading on to the final lap where we're going to have to put in a monster of a lap if we want to catch up to uh, to Ian One on that Ducati. Trying to put the power down, come on. 
popping a little bit of wheelie and off after this year of course Rossi changed his helmet design so it was uh, he had quite a few years with this traditional helmet and then it sort of changed in that we were really wide for turn one tip it in at turn two power out decent out of there decent out of there look at the black lines we're putting down oh. 3.3 is the gap to Ian Ernest. So the Ducati quit through sector 1, 2 and pretty quick through the final sector. But we gained loads of time on the Duke through sector 3. Which I guess you'd expect more of a tighter, slower section of corners. So that's where we're really going to gain. But these, these long flowing ones maybe favour the Ducati a little bit more. And when we bounce over the kerbs... Cost us time as well. I can see the gaps climbing again. But Lorenzo is still with us, look. He's still right there. Look at that. Oh, you see the front. You see the handlebars shaking there. Oh, and we're wide. That's not going to help us out, is it? Power out on the rear, stepping again. Crutch low crashes, lots of crashes from the Hondas in this race. So both Repsol Hondas and then the next quickest Honda, which is Cal Crutch Low, all crash him. Made a few mistakes through that sector three, so that has cost us some time. We didn't gain as much time. Lorenzo is still with us and he's powering out of there. He's gonna be picking up the slipstream. We should be okay. Break into the final corner. A little bit late to be honest. Although well, actually get it just about perfect. Look at that, pull it round. Power out, race over, Dovey wins from Ian Oni, so a 1-2 for Ducati, and then two, then a 3-4 for Yamaha, and uh, misery for the Hondas. But uh, there we have it for this episode, I hope you do enjoy this video. We'll do some more on the different older MotoGP games, so make sure you let me know which ones you want me to play, which riders and which tracks, and I will go ahead and do it. So for now, I hope you enjoy, subscribe for more, and we will see you in the next one.